Solitude. Well, you're starting to set up all the scaffold around here. You're going to get that top rail on there. Uh, we work right off of all of these. So that's what we're doing. Let's go up and take a look at this roof. This is our solitude. We get all our catwalks right here. Like I said, he's working on that front right now, getting that railing together. And then uh, we just put this on. There's a window there, so I just want to put something against there. But this is your typical RV roof. So if you're going to buy something like this, sorry about the noise in the back. We're working on a... Uh, Working on redoing uh, some siding on the other one over here, if you're curious. That's what we're doing. We tore all that siding off. We're doing that over there. So we're working with that router, trying to shape it in. But um, if you're going to look at a coach like this, obviously get up here and look at the roof. Look at this. It's filthy. It's just filthy. So that's that right there, you want to know, hey, if it's that filthy, that means it's, it's it hasn't been maintained. Typically, some folks get up here and at least wash the roof if they care about it, right? So... And then some folks can't get up here and wash it. So still, the point is, is there issues with it? You got all these wrinkles right here. That's an issue. Come over here. This is a track, though. So they took out the insert trim that goes in there, which a lot of people do, because that insert trim, the stuff that they use just sits in the track, and then water can get down inside there. We use a different insert, so it doesn't do that. But when the water travels inside the track, then it gets down behind here, and then it starts rolling down through the siding. You have some issues with that, but that's missing. And you know, you'd want to look around. So let's get back over here to the edge. You can see the edge here. There's no protection on the edge right there, but it does look like you had some breaching right here. See it? That would be a concern. Here's yet another one. So those are some of the things you want to look for because that's telling you right off. Look at here, tree branch caught this one pretty good. Look at there. But don't be afraid to climb up here and at least look for these because that's going to tell you that this thing's already at failure. Got some issues here. And also you can see if you look real close, see all that cracking and everything? This is gone. This roof is toast. It's over it. That's indicative that it's just um, been exposed to too much UV light and, and it's just depleted out, so it's gone. That's with the, all that crackling. Sometimes you'll see it looking... I, some people call it uh, spider webbing, I've heard that, but to me it looks more like eggshell. Like when you get a hard-boiled egg and you're going to crack it. That's what it looks like to me, so we'll call it eggshelling. I'm going to coin that. The other thing you want to look for is make sure there's caulking on here. You see? You want to make sure... There's caulking on there. So this is the insert trim I was just chatting about. Let's see if I can get my knife open here. This is the insert trim. See how that just slides in there? So water is going to still get in here. It'll get in this track right here. And then the water will travel. And it'll travel all the way down there. And depending on where it terminates or how it terminates, you could have water getting inside there. So we don't use this. The stuff we use, it'll go in and over this track so it keeps all the water out. But these are some of the things, again, if you're going to buy one, you're going to be looking for these things. You want to see what's going on with it. You're going to see uh, we've already got some discoloration. This uh, awning looks like it's aged. And then um, right here, this is a dead leak. So you want to open this up like it is. And water will trickle down the wire, it'll go through the boot, and then it'll get down in here, and you'll start having issues underneath here. And this usually goes soft. So you would load this if you have a crank up. We're not going to replace the crank up, but um, we're going to um, take this right off. But if you had one of these, put that in there and put that, put that back, meaning put some caulking in there. You can see they've had some issues up here. I'm going to see what's going on with that thing beeping over there. Put some metal on here. <laughs> so you patch this, and then, uh, you know, you see you put this on here. But again, it, obviously he's getting this redone, but I'm saying if you were to buy one, obviously you're looking at this thing, you know you need to put a roof on it. So, um, that was a CO2 sensor going off on that other one. Also, you want to make sure there's caulking inside and around here. If there isn't adequate caulking, you know that's going to have to be done. You can also pop out a few screws here. If you uh, just slide this out, even on the back side going down, on the vertical side, you can take a few screws out. And if the shanks look all rusty, uh, that's that's indicative you may have some issues. 
And then, um, you know, this is all the die core they want you to keep slobbing on there. Put more on, more on! Gee whiz. I do not like die core at all, as you can tell. Die core exploits people's ignorance to roof systems, and they want you to keep slobbering it on. That's what they want you to do. Water's going to get down in here. You say there's a base right here. We're going to put a boot on it so it'll be done. But uh, then you want to check around here. But this stuff is just junk. This is it's the only product that I've ever known in all the years I've been doing construction that's designed to be outside. Marketed to be outside. I shouldn't say designed. It's marketed to be outside. And it fails every three to four months. That's just telling me that it's not designed to be outside. It's probably an interior product that they get real cheap and uh, they sell it real high like 12 bucks a tube it's your cash cow they're probably not going to change that because i'm sure they've heard the complaints about their products and what do they say put some more on you know, oh you didn't do it right you didn't do it properly you didn't clean it enough you didn't do this you didn't you didn't you didn't you didn't it's not worth it so the uh, you can see how slammed down the ac is as well and we're going to be putting the curves up we're going to lift it up so now water can flow around properly what happens on the air conditioners is kind of you have all the the debris that's coming down just the even tree branches and leaves and things and they get caught up underneath there and when they get caught up under here you don't have a lot of room under there you know I mean this is really very minimal I barely get my hand under there so when all that gets clogged up inside the air conditioner is a drain port so it can drain and if it gets all clogged up it's still going to drain but what will happen is it'll fill up and it'll go back into the ductwork, and then you get a leak you know, hey I got a leak and what it is it's all clogged so that's something to look for and then I, I already explained oh, you got all these wrinkles here so we'll be putting some protective strips on here and even that other awning but it looks like someone may have tried to attempt a coating that's what it looks like if it's got a coating on it you probably don't want it coatings don't last on these they're really not designed for them if, so, if anything says RV I'm gonna put it this way if it says RV this product you're looking at it. it says RV don't buy it if there's RV in it, don't buy it don't buy it it's just you know it's just junk so all they do is try to take a product that they know has probably worked or maybe on a flat roof on a commercial roof and they go hey we can use that on an RV it's a pretty much the same thing as a flat roof these flex and twist and rack too much a lot of products that you may think you could use on a flat roof a commercial roof aren't gonna work on an RV so We'll let them changing out this lens too. This is an acrylic one. You want to see if there's any cracks in here. Obviously, they've just mucked it all over to make sure it stayed watertight. But um, you want to make sure that you check all that out. Check all the caulking. It looks like it's already had a couple of layers. You can see yet right there, it's already going to start failing there. So um, should, we're going to again. This will be up on a curb. Everything's going to be up on a curb. So the same thing. You're checking along the edge. Make sure it's tight. Now EPDM rubber shrinks. So when it does, it's like running a rubber band all the way over here. And when you get a slit, it just starts to expand and you can really run into a problem with it. So, uh, I mean, it, and there's no caulking on here. The bad part about that is if water does get behind there and get behind the side, you're going to have delamination. We did a big delamination job on the Montana. Take a look at that. That was a project for sure. So here you go. You get some more failed out. You can see all the pocking and all the holes there. So this is a good example of why we normally put um, we put two strikes. When we put this back, we're going to have caulking behind here. That'll ooze out. We'll strike it down. Then once that cures, we're going to put another bead on there. Then once that cures, we're going to go with a bigger bead and overlap it. Because when you run a caulking gun, the caulking itself has air bubbles in it, in the tube. It just can't prevent it. It's the way it's manufactured. It just gets dispensed into the cartridge. So there's bound to be air in it. So the problem is, if you start going along and you hear it crackling as you're caulking, then you just injected an air bubble and pretty soon that will surface. When it surfaces, it could potentially be a leak. So my thought is, if you put a second strike over it, what are the chances of it leaking, right? You're not going to have one air bubble hit over another. It'd be slim to none. You'd probably hit the lottery. So, looking down inside here, I thought I'd seen some daylight. See that daylight in there? See if I get my finger under there. Looks like there may be a hole or something. Or is that just something in there? Nope. Yeah, there's a hole right there. Probably need to straighten that out.
Yeah, right there. That's weird. There's just a scratch in there. It looks awful shiny. I can't see my finger on the other side of there, so it must just be awful. It must have been a tree branch that dragged in there. But um, they don't usually put protection on here either. Yeah, peel some of this back give you an idea of what they do these just and you can see this gap that's because the plywood is not as wide as the coach you know you get whatever 97 inches or so maybe on this I'm guessing so there's your deck okay and you can see it's missing right and then all they did was put this it's just duct tape that's all it is they're not so when we do this I'm gonna have to bridge a piece of aluminum across here or a light piece of steel or something to make a nice shoulder off of this i can't i can't put this back together like that we still have a protective strip on it but that's going to get corrected i won't i won't put it back that way i want to have some strength on there so but that's us so far in our solitude we're going to start getting everything together start getting it stripped away and see if we can't get this thing uh put back on here we're going to be putting a tan roof on here that's what we're going to be going with so we'll be back next clip coming up okie doke well you can see we have got no roof deck damage at all zero zero roof deck damage which is good so we're trying to move along i don't like this though i don't like that at all these are our protector strips right here that we're going to put on but I, I don't like that so we're going to put something on that and something else i was saying look right here all this cold air is going into that hole right there so that's what we're doing now is, is tightening everything up where you don't have all these holes and we're putting in some foam and everything to make sure. And that's, uh, we did the same up here to this other one. These are a couple of vents here. I probably am too short to show you, you know, but we did the same to that one up there. There's another AC unit that's up there and we did the same. Make sure everything's all taped off because it, it will run inefficiently. It will run inefficiently. You'll have all that air kind of the cold air that you need is all running through the cavity of the the roof right so that's not going to help uh, so that's what we're doing there and then like you said all these protective strips we're going to be putting on all the seams we'll be putting on all the seams so they're all ready to go and hopefully get some roof on here real soon all right we got our roof on the passenger side rolled out now we got our balance roller so we've already got all our strips and protective strips and then one of the other things i wanted to do we filled all this in. I was telling you about the gap that we had there, that little gap. I want everything to sit and roll nice. So we put that on there. And now this, this is our buffer piece to go on there to protect the edge so it'll be nice and square. So we did all that. And then uh, now we're just rolling everything out. So we got to still roll over this side, glue it, and then get that done. Now we're just rolling out with the big roller. That's got to get cut out right there. That's a vent. Just want to make sure she's a glued down there and staying down. All right, we have got this all glued. Let me show the glue we got in there. So now we are going to roll this out and then roll it out with a big roller, and the little roller, then roll it with the big roller, and then roll it again and walk on it and stomp on it and get it to jump on it. Whatever we got to do, get her to stick. Now right, we've got it rolled out. Now okay. yeah, we're just going to cut that vent out and then we're going to roll it. That piece was a little bigger than most. So we take the little balance roller there, roll it out. And then we take the big heavy roller, stomp her down. And then uh, we get up here and get a few guys together. We're trying to find some girls up here to join us. We do a river dance. And man, I think I'll tighten her up. The old river dance roof stomp. That'll, if, if it comes up from that, it do no hope for the roof. We are done with our solitude. We're gonna, we just did that to protect the window. RVRoof.pro, not .com, .pro. This is when we install the roof. That's a year, month and year. So we can monitor it, make sure everything's doing what it should be doing. So we've got our stands in the back of the AC right there. Everything's all welded, all the curves are welded. Everything's all double sealed on the caulking right here. Went around some of this other areas too to make sure. Went around, got your boots in there. So it keeps everything tight. Got new fabric on here. We're gonna adjust it as we open it out. We just gotta get it away from the scaffold here. 
we got a uh, counter flash right here. The purpose of the counter flash is when the when the water is running hard as you're you know in the rain that is as the water is pushing across the roof. We've got these curbs here, so that prevents the water from getting up. So that prevents the water from getting up into the curb. And this right here prevents the water from trying to run along the bottom side of this air conditioner. That's what it does. On the other side here, on the bottom side, you've got a lot of corrugation up underneath there, so the water doesn't isn't going to travel back there like it would on the front. So that's the purpose of the counter flash. And you see we got another uh, boot right here, another base. Then you can see all the protective strips we've got in here. You can see the shadow lines, I guess, on those. Two strikes on here, like I was saying. Same thing on here. These are special covers, I guess. You don't need to have the actual cover on there. I like to see them on there, but even around all of our vents, two licks. And you can see the flange we designed on here. This is the flange, that little piece right here. So when the water is trying to roll up, even if it was a heavy storm and really wanted to run up, that's going to stop it and it's going to divert it around both, both sides. So, and they're all designed the same. Those boots on the plumbing, the plumbing pipe sits in there. You can see how tall that, that boot is pretty tall. It's a couple of inches, so you're not going to get anything coming up. Even if you had some like splatter and rain, we'll say, that's all sealed, so if you took the cover off, it's all sealed. Even if you lost that cover, what would happen is the water would just go into the holding tank. So this is the uh, basically the, the curb here. This is what I was saying. So there's your flange. The water's going to run across here. It's going to hit up in here, and it's going to get diverted out. And then this is all heat welded. All this is heat welded. The whole thing is all heat welded. That's going to be a heck of a water drop to try to penetrate that. You've got the same system we got our two stands in the back, and you can see in the front here, we've got the counter flash up there. So everything is all done. This thing is good to go. We're ready to rock and roll and get her out. We appreciate you watching. Now just keep in mind that these are not DIY videos. We don't sell any of the curves. We don't sell any of the boots. We don't sell anything, in fact. So we don't do any of that. And also, they're not DIY videos. If you get a tip out of this, hey, that's pretty good. But... Um, they're not designed for that. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we do that I just couldn't possibly videotape every single thing. So the um, insert trim, this is a different style, which a lot of people have been asking about, but you can't buy it in black anyways. But this snaps in and over the track. I may have a piece over there. And uh, let's see, do I have a piece of that insert trim over there? There it is right there on the top. So when it goes in the track, you can see, see that groove in there? Now there's other ones out on the market like that that are black, but they're not like this. And you can see that concaved type of uh, profile on it. And I like that because when it snaps in, boy, that's in there really strong and, and it's not going to come out. So then, you know, you can put a couple of screws as a prudent measure. This is all sealed in here. If you remember, these come up and they sat up here. And actually the turn bar was up here too. Uh, I don't like that. I don't like it. It's a water trap to me because it's coming in here. And then typically on a lot of coaches, you'll have this piece will come up on here and then you'll have the other one intersect. And this corner right in here is where it'll all pool. And that's where you have your issues. Now you have water running this way, creating an erosion effect on the caulking. I want it off the roof. Let's get it off the roof. So that's why we drop this down and replace that. And uh, then we replaced all this insert trim all the way down to the bottom because I don't want to have any issues with that. Again, all of this is all sealed in here as well. So we can get all this water, just get it off the roof. So that's our big solitude. We appreciate you watching. And again, here's our website right here, RV Roof. You can go to RVRoofInstall.com. That's our website. But I have to cut these out by hand. So I kept cutting them out by hand in my hand. And boy, RVRoofInstall.com, boy, that was getting to be a lot. And uh, then... Um, I said, well, let's just go with a shorter URL. So I got this one here, rvroof.pro. And again, there's videos up, up there. Well, there's information up there. This is a Carlisle brand. It's not GAF. This is Carlisle 60 mil TPO. It's a structured membrane. Let me show you what that is before I forget. So here's the piece. This is white. But this, obviously, this one on the coach being tan. And then on the back, you can see all those little squares. That's your structured membrane right there. That's where you get your strength. It's built into the piece, and that's where you get your strength to resist against uh, hail, where you resist against tree branches and things like that.
So this is a commercial system. This is the same exact material you're going to find on a hotel, office building, library, restaurant. Same exact installation procedures. What I've done is just designed these curb assemblies to work and function properly for an RV. There's a lot of different styles, a lot of different sizes, and I just figured out who's who and who's what, and, uh, but they work and function properly. You know, on, if you were to Google commercial roof images, you would see all of the air conditioners, you'd see vents and blowers and all these things up on a box, which is basically that box is called a curb, which is what these are. So and then they're all flashed in, which is a piece that we weld to the roof, and then they all have counter flashing, which is the other piece that we put on the top to prevent any water from, from coming over. So, uh, but that's us. We're all set. We're just uh, doing a couple touch-ups, cleaning it down, but we got to move her out. And uh, we appreciate you watching. This is our solitude.